I thought it was like north, mid north sort of England. Turns out we were all wrong. It's only two hours away from us and it's yeah. a direct line to South Wales. But your face is red. So we're off there today because one of our American FB friends, Jeanette, has a spare ticket and she's doing a tour of Europe. So we are joining her in Stonehenge and we are very excited. We all believe it's haunted. We watched a Posted to ghost video on YouTube last night. We're not convinced. Today we're going to see if we can try to recreate that video yeah. and debunk it like the Paranormal Fact or Fiction crew, only with a lot more style and a better soundtrack. The video is quite good actually. We know already... it's fake, we just don't know how they did it. Well, I was all ready to debunk it straight off the cuff and I couldn't. Not he still easy. believes in Santa Claus. But I'm wondering whether it's somebody's shadow and they've just whitened it. Do you know how they did it? Not, no. Obviously, it probably more likely faked. Or some sort of projection because it was a Or projection. The projection. But, yeah. then, but then, you know, how much effort do you have to go to to take a projection, a projector to Stonehenge? Okay, right. The Stonehenge that is there now is actually the final stage. It was completed about three and a half thousand years ago. Um, the first Stonehenge was a large earthwork. earthwork. But actually, Stonehenge. Earthwork. Earthwork. <laughs> that tremors. Are we can get it yeah. today. We need. We need Kevin Bacon here now. Right. Someone get me Kevin Bacon. But he might just dance. That's fine. stone fell off into the sea, they had to go and rescue it with a team of navy divers. Yeah. They now think the blue stones actually arrived in Stonehenge via uh, the Ice Age glaciers. During the same period, the original oh, en traffic. entrance oh. of the circular earthwork sure. was widened and a pair of heel stones were erected. Also, near the part of the avenue was built aligned with the midsummer sunrise. The third stage of Stonehenge, about 2000 BC, were the Sarsen stones, which were brought, they think, from the Marlborough Downs near Avery in North Wiltshire. Um, it would, they reckon it would have taken about 500 men using leather ropes to pull one stone, with an extra 100 men needed to lay the huge rollers in front of the sledge. They were arranged in an outer circle of a continual run of lintels. Inside the circle, five 
chili fans are placed in a horseshoe arrangement and that's what we can still that's what started the day. The final stage took place soon after 1500 BC when the blue stones were rearranged in the horseshoe and circle that is there now. Um, they reckon there's probably about 60 stones and they've long since been removed or broken up. Yeah, apparently the heel stone is said to have been thrown by the devil at a monk who was spying on him between the stones. Spying on him? What was he doing? Stone pinned the clergyman to the ground by his heel. I mean, that's a pretty good aim because the heel's quite small. Is that the modern equivalent of Achilles? Oh, and yeah, there's also the theory that the technology to build Stonehenge wasn't around all those years ago, so they had help from extraterrestrials. <laughs> 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 So this is not Calamity for like, Horror, this is Men in Black. Yeah. This is X-Files, bitches. So this Stonehenge is basically our pyramids, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But why Everybody would, knows Stonehenge. Why would extraterrestrials come all that way just to build the stone circle? I mean, if you're going to come all that way, why not take over the planet? They actually look, the stones, the stones themselves look like seats for giants. Actually, there is a link to giants. Really? Yeah. Um, medieval, I think that. Yeah, medieval writers from Geoffrey of Monmouth referred to the monument as the Giant's Dance. Ah. And they reckon that Aurelius Ambrosius, the King of Britain, wished to construct a memorial over the site where 460 British consuls and princes lay buried. They'd be massacred at the banquet by the treacherous Saxons. He sought the advice of Merlin, who told him to send for the giant's dance from Kilaris, a mountain What's in that? Ireland. Aurelius sent his brother Uther Pendragon to get with an army of 15,000 men to bring the stones to him. Um, they had no problem defeating the Irish, who weren't keen on letting their monument go. Um, and the army found that moving the stones was impossible. So Merlin intervened and using a series of engines transported them down the sea by ship to Britain where they were erected exactly as they stood in Ireland. And one story says that some of these giants were dancing in a circle when they were mysteriously turned into stones. They reckon the legend is due to the fact that in Stonehenge the some of the large stones look like giants holding hands. Mm. Um, some say they were built by the Druids, but they were there 1500 years before the Druids arrived. We are in Chippenham, where the famous chips were invented. And ham was also invented here. Yeah. Chip and ham. Chip and ham. <laughs> chips, yeah. chips and ham. Chips and ham. Chips and ham. And their favourite meal is chips and ham. Another police van. Another there was police everywhere. Oh my god. Forensic, Forensic services. That's a crime scene van. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I haven't done anything yet. Oh, oh they're not even giving us a chance. At the roundabout, take the third exit onto New Road. See if he sounds different. See the yeah. voice upgrade. It's sort of deeper. Maybe he's doing, a, he's doing a lot of singer, singing lately. Yeah, he sounds like he's been reading audio books. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, he sounds slightly less robotic, I Yeah. Think. He's becoming aware. <gasps> no. He's becoming self aware. No. You can conscious him. Take the first exit onto Station Hill. Station Hill. Station Hill. That's bound to be where the station is. Do you reckon that's named after the station? Oh, I, I bet it is. There's it another cop car. Yeah. Another cop car. Jesus. Just paralysed. I recognise this place. We were here recently, weren't we? No, no. that looks like the bridge in Tenby. Tell me what to do, man. God. God. So, so bossy. Ah, oh, backseat driver. <laughs> front seat. Front seat driver. Front seat, yeah. Is this the van Yeah. This, is, this pointed to the station. In 290 yards, the destination is on your left. On He's different. Road. He is different. He's different. They've upgraded Siri. Okay, we're at the station. We are at the station. What time is it? Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. Round of applause. Oh. We just met Jeanette and our tour guide. Peter, was that? Yeah. At the Chippenham Station. Hotel. And we're now following them in the convoy to... Stonehenge. There's our convoy. There's our convoy. Our guest, Jeanette Lewis. And what's the um, guy's name? Peter, I just said. Did you? Did you? Peter. I'm concentrating on driving. 
This is from the guy who setting up his new web host thing. It's called Fat Cow. Yesterday he was calling it oh, first Fat Cow, then it was Mad Cow, Ugly Cow, Ugly Cow, Crazy Cow, cow. Smelly Cow. Mad, yeah. And he spent and all he day not way. knowing what his own web hosting site was called. What are we doing? We're leaving our cars here. Why? You got like half hour to go, yeah? We're walking first. Unless we're not going to Stonehenge first. Well, this is just a lay by. We've been taken into the woods to be murdered. Very magical. They're always here at Stonehenge. They say crows hold the magic of the sunset. Okay, so a little drawing here how they think they've transported the stones. A lot of people on lots of rocks, big rollers. So you get enough people on a, on a rope, you can move anything. Some of these big ones weigh weigh up to 50 tonnes, so which is like 20 of those big coaches. You know, God, so. you find it hard enough moving furniture. So yeah, I mean, I don't know what, quite why they made them look like the village people. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but, uh, 70s porn stars. Yeah, this is what it would have looked like originally when it was complete. I, think they, I always think the men have been let out to play here with a big... A big Lego kit because the, the, the principle's the same, you know, the stones overlap to get the next one on. And you've also got little ball and sockets as well. You know, all the stones are elongated and phallic. <laughs> I'm going to use that word a lot today. So, whereas at Avery, the stones are fatter, they're more sensuous. It's these little stones that were bought from Wales. If, if there's a rebel in you dying to get out, wait till we've been all the way around and then oh. run over the rope and get thrown out. I can only throw you out once, but I'm not with you. I will be down that tunnel. <laughs> The first stones here were the ones from Wales. Either the people came from Wales or else they thought their ancestors were from Wales. So, so because they almost look like little people. Is that about your size, mate? <laughs> <laughs> they are shoot stones. So that was the first circle and then they made it smaller and then they brought the stones down from near Abury, about 20 miles to the north. Those are the big ones you see. And then they did loads more uh, pits and holes and stones to make the astronomy more complicated. But whereas at Abury, once they put a stone in the ground, it was never moved. And Abury is the goddess temple. So uh, once I said that once to some uh, American lady from California and she said, yeah, at Abury the girls got it right first time. <laughs> There are 15 stone circles in Britain that are bigger than Stonehenge. We know from some of the local skeletons, people were coming here from the Alps. So the stones from the Selly are the smaller ones. They form two circles originally, the two biggest ones are there. Mm. And I soon found out mm. that for most places on the outside, you can't see what's going on. In the inner horseshoe, you see the gaps are smaller. These gaps of the inner circle are exactly the diameter of the sun. The biggest stone at Stonehenge is that big whopping one there. And again, if you stand inside, inside in some of those convex stones, your voice and your drum will go louder. And in fact, I know that if you stand in Stonehenge later, they can't be like promotion. Abury is the yin site of Britain and Stonehenge is the yang site. And that's why a women can often associate them more with Abury because it's, mm. the stones are a lot more sensuous, they're a lot more um, touchy feely. Mm -hmm. We'll have a good group later on. A lot of folklore associated with Stonehenge, a lot of UFOs are often seen over the top of here overnight. Really? Fairy light, Romans walking across the field, and all sorts of things. So the place is still pretty turned on today. What did happen to Stonehenge? Well, again, people took a bit of it away, sometimes encouraged by the church. When Christianity arrived, the only way to heaven is through the priest. But uh, in rural areas like this, the old pagan practices carried on. It's 50 or 60 ley lines that come into Stonehenge, so depending where you stand, it can be within a few feet, you'll suddenly get a hit of it. They're a metaphor for the life force of the planet. You know, when we douse, we douse dragons. The original stone circle was out here. These little white dots mark where the blue stones, the Welsh stones, originally were. Right. We decided to shrink it and make it smaller and put all these other stones up that actually stop you looking inside. If you, if you look through the gap there to the right of the big stone, you'll see the heel stone next to the road. 
as you move that stone moves as well so you can tell it's in the distance so this is that's the alignment of the sunrise on the longest day of the year but in the opposite direction from the summer solstice sunrise is the winter solstice sunset which is coming up just before christmas so you see that big burial mound over there that marks the midwinter sunset all those little yeah all of those are there. burial oh. mounds yeah some of them astronomically aligned nearly all of them on the ley lines coming in they're positioning the dead to be of use to the living and, uh, some of them astronomically aligned but also this is a real Oh, oh, there is a line from Stonehenge to the Pacelli Mountains. See the, the energy is wobbling, there's another one just there. And again, they're all coming in. It's like, like a black hole, it's like sucking stuff in. Really? And there's and they're standing right on. So, uh, this is our guest dinner. Hello. Well, they're from America. Well, again, every few feet there's, a, there's an energy <laughs> Lovely line. to be with you today. It's lovely to meet you as well. I'm very excited to meet you. So. Me too. <laughs> And oh, wow. it's, so, so. Yeah, that's incredible. The first American friend that we've actually oh, met that's in that's person. Good. So it's amazing. So there's going to be a lot of jealous people in America. <laughs> I guess a lot of people have already said, I'm so envious, I'm so envious. <laughs> you get to meet them. Who yes. wants to try? Who wants to try? Yeah, okay. I don't know whether all the metal you're wearing. <laughs> probably. You'll probably light up. <laughs> okay. Focus. Say, so please show me the energy coming into Stonehenge don't hold, don't and then hold just, yeah, just, yeah, just hold it loose and then just, just walk forward but keep focusing show me the energy coming into Stonehenge keep walking okay okay I think she's actually dead no, keep, <laughs> keep, keep, keep focusing keep focusing don't focus on the rod but focus on the energy got a few little wiggles there <laughs> so uh, again it takes people a long time to learn this we're not exactly sensitive <laughs> well, I think you are I think you are if you're female you're sensitive so yeah, you see, you're getting a few little wobbles, which means so the more you, if, the, if you were to come here more often, you'd get more attuned to it, and uh, you'd find. Are you right-handed? Uh, both. Okay, try your left hand. Try your left hand. Again, some people don't get it, and other people do, and some people don't need a dowsing rod; they can just feel it. Please show me the energy coming in and out of Stonehenge. <laughs> it. Again, I come here every week and mm. I'm really attuned to play. Try dowsing when you get home, you know, at your local sacred sites. Because some people don't use a rod at all, they, or they have a fat rod, a longer rod, a pendulum, you know a pendulum? Mm -hmm. Some people yeah. use those, so Probably try different same. things. God, you, you, you're a walking pendulum. <laughs> Down slightly. There you go. Keep focusing. Please show me the energy coming in and out of Stonehenge. Few little wobbles there. Nothing I can too feel major. it. I can feel it when it tugs in a certain direction. Yes. Yeah. I can, I can feel a little tug. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. If oh, now walk, see, I feel it tugging definitely this yeah. way. If, we, if it was to walk up and down here for about half an hour, you'd gradually get attuned to it, and you'd have definite movements. Definitely then, feel the tug. When they did the excavations and the and the virtual reconstruction of Stonehenge, they found out that was a, a 15-inch slope on the side. And yet when they did the reconstruction, they found out that the horizontal stones were perfectly horizontal. They'd allowed for the slope. And the only way you can get that is if you go down the slope, one stone sticks out the ground one inch more than the one next to it. Are the stones in any danger of uh, collapsing? Or any no, point? they've all been made safe now. Some of them have never fallen over. A few of these were re-erected in the 50s and 60s, but most of them are how they've always stood. I've got a shot taken on the equinox when the sun's setting over there in March and September, and the sun actually goes into his mouth. <laughs> so he eats the sun. <laughs> and, and then there's another one with the flat ones between the two that don't have a flat piece. Look, no, through my... It looks like a person. Um, on that film, it was between two rocks, on an upright rock. Yeah, but it was moving. But I'm just wondering... And it was a smaller one. Oh, but yeah, it's similar, it similar. Smaller, it was a smaller rock, 
I'm just saying there were natural carvings in the rock. Look at people, there's one round the other side, but you can only see it from one angle and it looks like a person. I'm just wondering, is that how they did that? And they just colored that. Didn't have the right shoes. Yeah. <laughs> so I said to Michael that, you know, I bet you that they're going to fix that. And pretty soon the shot was different and your <laughs> shoes were on and it was in it. Cause we thought, oh, yeah, they pointed that one out. We're just in the house. We'll just have our grotty um, cleaning out trainers and then we saw the shot and we went, oh no. Yes. You a full connection, it was a three... That's the full connection, it's the only bit where the three stones are in a row. And wow. we're going to come round to the heel stone now on your right here, which is a heel from Hellas, the sun god. And this is a real stone with attitude. Yeah. The facial features are original, it was chosen because it looks like that. And the face is original. You'll see there's two dark lines going across the field and into the distance, this is in a slight lump, and they come into here either side. That's the avenue, the processional avenue that people used to walk up and it aligns with the summer solstice sunrise. Okay. It's a myth that this stone lines up with the summer solstice sunset. It doesn't. What happens, the sun rises to the left of it and then the, sh the sun goes behind the stone and then a pike-shaped stone casts a long, thin shadow that penetrates the consummation of the gods. What do you suppose the flat stones uh, we see around are they fallen over or were they? Did they that was formerly standing up. There used to okay. be a, there used to be another companion to this, and then there used to be two stones in front, and then that used to have a companion. It was a stone avenue. This is the front door of Abel. <laughs> I'm showing you what you are. The oracle stick. You hold a stick, you'll see. Would you, where, is it, how are you feeling? Is it changing? Because what we're after is, it's when it stops changing. I will have to use a science fiction analogy. It's like a hologram. This is a hologram. It's not the real you. The real you is what you pick up the disc. Yeah. <laughs> I'd ask you about the like and ghosts of this place. Then is it is it? Well, it's not like ghosts in the in a, in a conventional sense. No, no, I, I I see ghosts anyway. I don't see ghosts as trapped spirits. I see them as uh, more things that flicker into our reality. You know, when the conditions are right. I think they're still around us all the time, but they're in another dimension. And then you know, every now and again, they just flicker into our reality, and that's when people yes, see them. They're not the really cool there the uh, in this dimension, but you're you're seeing into another dimension. Terrible. Never mind. This is a little village called Othaven. It's halfway between Stonehenge and Avery, on the River Avon, and that's it's the river that they brought the stones down for Stonehenge. So these mountains totally surround Avery. One of the hills have got burial mounds right on the top, and they look just like nipples. <laughs> because they're made, you know, this is the body of the goddess. Do you want to have something to eat? Mm -hmm. The fork. Normally we, just, normally we just pick it up and just shove it in. Got some vegan cake there. So this is your first chocolate cake ever. Yeah. yeah. We tried to make one, but it fell on the floor and didn't break, so we were too scared to eat it. we cut it with a knife and it healed. So it was <laughs> we didn't eat it after that. Yeah, it's actually nice. Wow. You found something new that you actually like. I know. Usually it's already spat out by now. <laughs> You're wow. eating it. Wow. I'm, uh, I'm quite impressed, actually. I'm quite amazed. They're used to ghost hunters coming in here. This is uh, probably going to be the quickest investigation <laughs> ever. <laughs> research anywhere, I do. No. Right here. Sit on the left. Oh wow, look at this. 86 foot deep. The stones are like eleven point seven, so the stones are exactly a degree colder than all the stones. Yeah. 
Oh God, that's really bad. That's like, imagine how bad embarrassing that is. You fall down the well and then they make a monument for you. Legacy to the world. That's, that's true down there. Reckon he fished him out. Still probably there. still down there, isn't he? I don't know. We get around. The well is circa 1600. Foundations for this pub were laid in the early, early 17th century, but it wasn't until 1822 that license was granted to uh, serve alcoholic drinks. I'm not haunted. <laughs> 26 degrees for his belly, his ass is measuring it to a toasty 20 degrees. The dragons going around the earth, these two major energy centres and the, some of the big sacred sites in the world, Uluru, the pyramids, uh, Machu Picchu, Mount Shasta in the States, oh, and, Shasta. and uh, Glastonbury and Shaftesbury. Well, this little bit that goes across uh, Great Britain is this bit. Avery to within one mile is right in the centre, uh, and there's the uh, the female line. There's a mount. There's always two because nature oh, does balance. Yeah. The female current goes through Mary churches and womb tombs, and the male current goes through St Michael churches and goes through phallic shaped stones. That's where we're standing. So there's the world's biggest stone circle. A erect phallus sticking out of the ground, or is it a phallus penetrating the land? And this has been called the eye of the goddess or the eye of Ra. It's almost like a huge donut that Homer Simpson might have. <laughs> this huge double circle, and it's original. And this marks where the energy comes through, and it faces south. So this is facing the full moon, the sun at midday, and the stars. Sums up what is about. Two nights uh, ago, two nights ago, I bought, I bought groups around here in the night. Yeah, they're a, a, a species of sheep called Less the nervous. Wiltshire horn. Even the female sheep have horns on. Uh, perhaps whatever you see in these stones is the message for you. Ram's horn, the eye, the nose, the mouth and the chin. It's perfectly natural. Again, they were finding stones up on that hill two miles away. They bought all these stones here. Stand here in midwinter and you stand in the vulva, the yoni line here. It will rebirthing. Again, you see the sun rise in line with the face. There's uh, holes like that at the bottom. That is because this is a female stone. They're made of millions of little quartz crystals. And we actually have a dragon here. If it had been a little bit wetter today, both of his eyes would have been watering. <laughs> so in his one eye, it's very bloodshot. <laughs> This chapel was built uh, in the 1670s, I think, and it's right on the energy flow. So did they know about that? Or it's even facing the way the energy is going through the church. You guys might think I'm going to get a lot stronger than this. This guy's having his battery charged up. So there it moves straight away, and you get a real kick in your stomach when you first move into it. And then goes away there. This is the inner circle. You see how big even this inner circle would have been at one time. We're just looking at a quarter of it. That big concrete block over there was where the big obelisk used to stand. The sun used to rise over the obelisk and a phallic shaped stone 20 foot high will cast a phallic shaped shadow that only at Beltane goes into this crevice. Complete with clitoris above, which has, <laughs> which has been worn very smooth by people touching it. <laughs> Behave. So can you reach <laughs> Having fun there? <laughs> Ryan's turning on the stone. <laughs> go home and say, we went out with this guy today, he's talking about clitorises on stones. You know? <laughs> and uh, of a night when you shine the torch on this, this he really eyeballs you. There's his head, the eye, a spiral body, and then a forked tail at the back. Are these little guys original? Otherworldly orc head there, looking right, a bit distorted. But who he's looking at is this one. Now, what do you think this stone's for? Looks like a horse. Oh, it's a mm. lion. It looks like, a, it oh. looks like a, a dragon. The sun at summer solstice sets in line with the horse. So again, uh, the horse could be, do you know the goddess Rhiannon or Epona? So she's always shown as a white horse. Yeah. And the yeah. time of the year is summer solstice. And this horse is facing to the summer solstice sunset. She's so, in the Mabinod... Mabinod... Yeah, she's Mabinod in the Mabinod... 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 Those are the two biggest stones at Avery. 
Uh, that's like the front door of Avery. They're the tallest trees in the whole of Avery because they are very happy trees. They're right where the energy is going out the circle. male and female stone. So there's the clear, the vulva hoe, the yoni hole, with this 150 circles carved on it. So you can actually even feel some of the flint axe marks still on it there and there. So uh, only on this one stone anywhere in southern England. So, of course there was no writing in those days but that doesn't mean there wasn't symbolism. So the next one then is due to be the male stone. This one's called the skull stone and you can see it's like a rotting, decaying skull. And here we have the eye socket. And when you shine a torch, you know like at Halloween when you go, Ooh. Mm -hmm. if you do that down here, whoa, this is quite... Because uh... yeah, of course yeah. the shamans and the initiates were coming round here of a night, not just during the day. An orc weird head there. There is a hole, again, just below ground level, but when they re-erected this, they put it too far in the ground. It's tall and it's more obviously phallic, tall and slim, just like I used to be. Particularly from this direction, uh, there's no mistaking the symbolism. The next one is the female one, and there's the hole again at the bottom, just to prove it. Uh, uh, Americans often think it looks like an eagle. Even the big eye socket has an eyeball, and even the eyeball has a pupil right in the middle. We looked at these holes, which are natural, and we thought, well, why have they selected this stone? Again, we started wondering whether perhaps the shamans and the medicine men and the priestesses were sending messages through to the other world, through to the other side. Because none of these holes come out the other side because that would bring them back into this world. And when we put some membranes on these, we realised you can make drums oh, out Oh yeah. Them. So I'm going to invite you in a moment to chant into my orifice. When you, when you talk into this one with your ear closed to it, you get an almost instantaneous this one's called the crone stone because you've not got one head on here, you've got two. The old lady faces towards the midwinter sunset, the death time of the year, and the one with its eyes shut faces the bright summer solstice sunrise. So they're like Janus heads. I mean, as you move around, you see other faces, other shapes. Do you know that painting by, I think it's by Mulch, The Scream? Yeah. And if you imagine that distorted face, and also Quasimodo or the Elephant Man, this idea of this distorted head, the eyes, it's kind of melting. It's almost like a Dali paint sculpture, this. The two eyes, and when you're down here, it towers over you. And I put the torch down there and shone it up, and these were in darkness, the eyes. And then I shook it around like that, the torch, and the whole thing was moving. So you can imagine seeing this under the influence of mushrooms or alcohol. It would have been really freaky. I know that all of the different um, different cultures have a different... Yeah. Have Nearly the, every the tribal different... culture around the world, ancient or modern, has used psychoactive plants mm -hmm. to help them get to the other side. And there's no reason to believe that it wasn't happening in April. A fungal expert told me that there was 12 species of psychoactive mushroom growing in Wiltshire in the Neolithic. So they had all the elements here to, to use if they wanted to take that journey, that trip to the other side to meet the ancestors. Another head here, right-handed head. Uh, right face. He looks a bit grumpy, this guy, doesn't he? He reminds me a bit like Beaker out of the Muppets, this one. <laughs> he does look like Beaker, doesn't he? Some of the stones got damaged, we think, as they were moving them. As you can see, the fresh stone here, a big slither has come off. The archaeologist Alexander Keeler came round here in the 20s and 30s and re-erected some of the stones. He found some of them totally broken up. See, this one's held up by a plinth, a concrete plinth. Oh, yeah. And uh, he managed to cement some of the bits back on. So you can see here, he managed in the 20s and 30s to put three or four bits back on. And you can see how in ancient, in, in the 1700s, they tried to crack these open. They would drill, as well as using fires to crack the stones open. So um, this one's due to be the female stone in the sequence. She's lost her two boyfriends, but um, she's still standing. And I reckon she used to be heart-shaped, so I always say she's had her heart broken. Right in this corner, they found uh, the skeleton of an elderly female, and we think she was one of the shimankas, she was one of the medicine women here, because um, she had some ritual objects. She was all curled up in a fetal position because she was ready to be rebirthed again. 
in another life, but they put 26 little stones around her, and that's the number of stones in the inner circle. <laughs> And this is where we get the word C U N T from. Really? Okay. Because it means sacred opening. Take some water out of here to pass around. Get out of the shop. Back down the hill. As we approach it, you see the full length of the mound, 100 metres. Yet the, the chambers only occupy 10% of that. This mound would have been pure white in the Neolithic, so it would have reflected the sunlight, the moonlight. To say West Kennet is a tomb is like saying churches are just used for weddings. And it was open for a thousand years. Again, this is a womb site, and it would have probably been uh, looked after by women. There's the yoni hole again, just like we saw at Avery. And there's the face, two eyes and a nose, looking exactly towards Stonehenge. Pause at the entrance. Time outside as we do in because we look. Wow. It was filled right to the top over a thousand years. They've ritual objects, and uh, there's four side chambers and one end chamber, which is much bigger. And they found mainly elderly skeletons in this one, mainly young in this one, mixed adults in the next two, mainly men in the father's chamber away. So even in death, people had their place. And, uh, some of the skeletons were defleshed before they went in, so they put them on platforms like the Native Americans do, and then when the birds and the wolves take a lot of it away, what they've got left is then brought in. This chamber here actually is lit up just for one week of the year. A lot of these chambers are aligned with the moon, the sun, and some of them are stellar aligned. You're coming in here for your initiation. That might last days. Originally, that would have been a dark place because when you're, when you're in your mother's womb, there's no light. But what you do here in your mother's womb is the heartbeat. Where better to contact your ancestors than in the presence of their bones? different loads of pottery, ritual objects, power prints, um, four forms, When I had the psychics along, they felt that this chamber was where birthing took place. This is the only town chamber you've ever been able to see the outside world from. Even today, the sun and the moon can shine in every chamber, including this end one. I've got pictures of it. Now, those places where a psychically phenomena occur and the dowsing of it, their strongest, is also the places where the acoustics of their, their strongest is. You don't design chambers to be acoustically resonant for a load of bones. This is the west chamber, which is the largest chamber. It's the one where they found only men in the initial deposits. Uh, one woman said, well, perhaps we, we, we put them furthest away to the, from the entrance to make sure the men don't come back. <laughs> Originally, this would have been dark. It would have been like drumming inside a bell, you know, uh, or a tummy. That was the effect, really. You're going into the womb here for your rebirthing, and then you go back out down the birth canal, I guess, out into the daylight. The ear, this is called the living head, and this is called the skull stone and this is actually where the acoustics are lowest because it's a bit flat over here and when I chanted uh, and, and focused on bringing the ancestors through the meter went crazy and you might want to close your eyes and you might want to just go back five and a half thousand years
things that need to register. Uh, electromagnetic fields. No mm -hmm. Any changes in the And ghosts. <laughs> 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 well, it says ghosts need to run it, so it's official. <laughs> yeah. It proves it's a good one. Does anybody want to stand in the corner and uh, drum up and down? Oh, look, she's up there. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll douse up and down your chakras. And, uh, okay. you'll, feel, you'll just feel the vibration just going right through your body. Lights. Yes, that was an incredible feeling. Are you going to come through our ancestors today? Now, was that stone there, or did they remove that as a way in, or is this the end? No, this is the end of the chamber. This There's the nothing end. behind here except the. Uh, a thin row of spine of sarsens that runs down the whole end. But, uh, there's no other chambers. But again, it has been said about West Kennet that uh, there's no trapped spirits here. There's nothing trapped here, which is what's usually said about some um, haunted houses and pubs. Things are free flowing here. In this dimension, to others, it's probably already always been the case. Yeah, you might want to try the other chambers. like in a really dark chamber. I can't get this in pointing light. Both different levels. <laughs> Nothing. Just in the just in the chamber, a darkened chamber. And see if the uh, ghost meter goes off. Is still I don't think they're still here. I think they've just the two abandoned. Two has gone. We traced through this dark graveyard to find you. You could at least. Oh, it's it's just her. It's just her. She's coming.